Hen Sifu first premiered at a PlayStation State of Play event back in February. Its unique artistic design and slick fighting gameplay caught the attention of gamers around the world. The beat-em-up action game quickly became one of the most anticipated titles of the year and was originally slated for a 2021 release. After the decision was made to give the game a little more Polish time, Sifu now has a new release date of February 8, 2022. As we all know, 2022 is already shaping up to be a stacked year for PlayStation exclusives and video games in general. Although, Sifu will have some tough competition as it launches alongside the likes of Dying Light 2, Horizon Forbidden West, and Elden Ring later on in the month. But trust me, you won't want to sleep on Sifu. I was lucky enough to receive a preview copy of the Kung Fu fighting game by Slow Clap and my short time with the game has reaffirmed why it's one of my most anticipated titles for 2022. In Sifu, fights against enemies can sometimes mean managing how stunned they are rather than simply depleting their health bars quickly. Sure. Some enemies are basic and can quickly be taken out with a few punches, kicks, and open hand strikes but others are beefier and have actually trained. In fights like those, players will have to use the variety of attacks at their disposal to whittle down opponents before finishing them off. Simple light and heavy attacks are the basis of any combo in the game but more complex options are also available. By combining button presses with parries or moves of the joystick, Players can perform specific and devastating attacks. An open palm strike to the abdomen knocks the wind about an opponent, while a quick sweep can leave them vulnerable to a pummeling on the ground. Dodging and parrying on the other hand are all linked to the same button, and can be executed quickly enough that players can throw out attacks and then parry an enemy coming at them from the sides or behind. Sifu's combat adds up to something that has a high skill ceiling and may not immediately make sense to everyone. The first time I tried fighting in the game, which was without a proper introduction, I was quickly pummeled by groups of enemies. But after getting to know the controls and developing a feel for how attacking and defending work, I could handily take out any enemy that approached me. The Kung Fu fights in Sifu are the core of the experience and are satisfying, deep and addictive. As you get a little closer to the real death every time you fall, it makes you want to tighten up a little every time you get up again. You want to become more skilled. I started over on the demo twice to be able to get to the end, and could clearly feel in a short time that the fights flowed much more naturally. The combos and dodge maneuvers were easier to time, yet death is only a few mistakes away in Sifu. In its gameplay, Sifu feels a bit like a far more tactical, fluent and detailed Yakuza before it became turn-based. The tone is completely different, but in the melee-focused gameplay, it is not a completely skewed comparison. Objects like glass, baseball bat and chairs can be used as weapons until they are broken down. As in Yakuza, you can also make contextual attacks, such as smashing an opponent's head into a table. It is refreshing that in Sifu you are both a kung fu powerhouse but also a fragile human being. Unlike Yakuza, you do not have pockets full of bento boxes and energy drinks which give you strength and bring the health bar to the top. Instead, make yourself deserving of every single bit of life you get back. And there are consequences of dying. In short, nothing comes here for free, but you learn, hopefully, from every single time you die. After that, it's room after room of enemies, all crowded around a dance floor, leaning on the bar, or just chatting with one another. Until they spot you, that is, and decide to try and throw down. Most of them, while skilled, aren't much of an issue, and taking them out is simple enough. You've just got to pick up a bottle and throw it at them, or slide a chair along the floor to take out their legs and you're golden. Every so often though, an enemy you try to use a finisher on pushes you away. At this point, they get a big fiery health bar and turn into a mini boss of sorts. Suddenly you've got one definite threat to deal with and whoever they're being flanked by. It's tough and you need to think about where you are and what's around you to avoid being overwhelmed. 
You'll mess up eventually though, and doing so allows you to get up and spend the experience points you've earned on skills before re-entering the fray, but at the cost of one year of your life. It's a really intriguing system, and I can't say if it's good or not without playing more of the game, but it feels full of potential. You'll have a much more difficult time though if you do just try to punch and block your way through, especially because learning enemy attack patterns is another core aspect of the gameplay. Not trying to discourage anyone who would like to play the game with the bareness of just your hands but it wouldn't be the full experience of the combat. Using different weapons, the furniture, and anything that's not glued down is another core aspect of the gameplay. That is what makes Sifu feel so much more cinematic to me. It also helps the combat flow since you're almost always going to be outnumbered at first. Speaking of not getting the full experience, there's a level of player choice in Sifu and NPC interactions that let you decide if even fighting your way through is the way to go. There were three opportunities I saw to interact with NPCs, but all of them ended by just duking it out. Slowclap has already confirmed that there are parts of the game where certain choices allow you to avoid a fight. So it will be interesting to finally see the full extent of that when a game launches.